Hi everyone, I'm FMZ and today I want to talk to you about FM21, which is now due to be released on November the 24th. Hooray! I've been scouring the top five leagues in Europe to find teams that are going to challenge you or teams you may have overlooked that have an interesting story to tell. Now the rules, I've limited it to one club per league to try and offer some variety. We're only looking at Clubs that have established in those leagues, newly promoted sides are excluded from selection. If you like this video, please leave a like. If you want to subscribe, please click the subscribe button and don't forget to click the bell to be notified when a video goes out on the channel. Right, that's the ad been done. Let's get on with it. Everton. Ah, Everton. Now it's worth me mentioning that we are using the 2020 database, so not everybody's stats are going to be up to date. We probably won't look at them in that much detail anyway. This is just an overview of the club itself. So Everton, established Premier League club, have been a founding member of it since 1992 and have struggled, to be brutally honest, in the last few years. Obviously they were very much relegation fodder at the beginning of the Premier League years. They had that one season when they made it into the Champions League and then went out of it pretty quickly the following season, losing to Villarreal. And then they've kind of just gone into the middle ground, sort of mid-table, not really pulling up any trees. But actually, looking over Everton's history, they've actually done quite well. In the 80s in particular, they finished winners of the competition in 85 and 87, runners-up in 86... Obviously, they had that famous win over Manchester United in 95, but they were runners-up in 2009 in the FA Cup. They've actually won a European trophy, the Cup Winners' Cup, in 1985 as well. So it's a bit of a puzzler as to why Everton have struggled. And mainly it's because of managers. You know, they've gone through so many managers in the last few years. But I think under the new owner, Farad Muzeri, They've found their feet. Obviously, Bill Kenwright did so well in the intervening years, you know, to keep Everton going, to keep them trying to compete with that top four. It's very difficult to compete with the top four, as you can appreciate. But this year, I'm really, really impressed with Everton's transfer activity. Obviously, buying Hammers Rodriguez was an absolute no-brainer. Looking at him in slightly more detail, it's an absolute bargain buy for Everton as we've seen in the early weeks of the Premier League season he's just that little talisman that has got them going you know he's given them a bit of fight and spirit and yeah it's really really interesting to see how that's going to develop but obviously bringing in Alan as well Dicure obviously they had really good players already in Dignia Coleman Pickford you might want to look at the goalie perhaps Dominic Calvert-Lewin has obviously found his feet really well Richarlison is another great player Andre Gomez you know it screams a squad that should be doing better than it is and with a new stadium on the way can you be the one to recapture Everton's glory years Villarreal ah Villarreal nicknamed the Yellow Submarine not to be confused with the Beatles album of the same name Villarreal have had a bit of a chequered past. They spent the majority of their life since 1923 in the Segunda and below. They were promoted in 1998 and then were quickly relegated back to the Segunda, only to be promoted straight back again. But then if we skip ahead to the mid-2000s, that's when Villarreal really started to find their mojo. They made a UEFA Cup semi-final, they made a Champions League semi-final, never quite got over the line and then had that dramatic drop-off in 2012 when they were relegated back to the Spanish second division to bounce straight back again. So they have pedigree. They don't have a lot of it in terms of what they've won. Obviously, they were runner-up in La Liga in 2008. They've never really won anything. So that's a task for you, first and foremost. Looking at the squad, there are two names that jump out. First and foremost, Alberto Moreno, formerly of Liverpool. Francis Coquelin, formerly of Arsenal. And obviously Paco Alcacer, who is a very, very good player in the Spanish league, as is Carlos Baca, to be perfectly honest. So you have an OK team to start with. You may want to try and do something with it, but for a basis to start Villarreal back on the journey back into the top echelons of 
the La Liga table is not a bad starting point. Schalke. Next, we move into Germany and we move to Schalke. Now, you can forget David Wagner. He has been sacked by Schalke since this was updated after that 8-0 defeat to Bayern Munich on the opening day of the Bundesliga season. Their history is very much set in the 1930s and 40s. Six of their seven Bundesliga titles have come in that time, the last one being in 1958. They were runner-up in 2018. Last year, they set an unwanted record, however, 16 games without a win in the Bundesliga, hence why David Wagner was sacked eventually. They did have a win in the Europa League in 1997, a famous win for them in that competition, their only European triumph. And much like the other teams on our list, their recent history is a bit up and down, very up and down if you look at that graph on the left. Now again, there are a couple of names that stand out to me in particular, but we'll start with Nastasic. He was at Manchester City. Benjamin Stambouli spent a short time with Tottenham Hotspur. Nabel Bentelev was one of our youth products. Sebastian Rudy is probably their most key player that they have in their squad. So it is going to need a little bit of tidying up and adding to when you first initially join them. And it's certainly going to be a challenge to drag them up the table. Olympic Lyonnais. Moving into France now with Olympic Lyonnais. Now, as you can see from the graph, they have got some very good recent history. Probably the most decorated team we've looked at so far. With seven league titles in a row in the mid-2000s. Runners-up in a couple of the seasons just gone. Third places. As I say, they are probably the most decorated team we have looked at so far. Their European history is not all that great. But again, they had a couple of Champions League semi-final appearances in the last sort of 10 or 15 years. Obviously, given PSG and Monaco's dominance in recent seasons, Lyon have kind of gotten lost amongst it all, which is a bit of a shame. Looking at their squad, they've got a very good squad. Jason Deny is one of their standout players. Moussa Dembele, Memphis Depay, Leo Debusses is a good player as well. So you have a great basis to work on. The trouble you're going to have is toppling PSG. AS Roma. And finally, we move to Italy, where we take a look at AS Roma. Again, another club that have had a very much up and down period in their history. Winners of Serie A as recently as two. 2001. They were runner up in 2017. They were runners up in the Champions League in 84. They won the UEFA Cup in 61, but they, that's the last time they won a European trophy. Last time they won anything at all was in 2008 when they won the Coppa Italia. So again, they're a club that have fallen on harder times in terms of winning stuff. Obviously, they've got a decorated history of doing quite well in competitions. The 14 runners-up spot, they've always seemed to be the bridesmaid, never the bride. And I think I saw a reason why. Since 2011, Roma have gone through nine different managers. The longest manager was Rudy Garcia, and he lasted just over two years. That's the reason why Roma have had such an up-and-down period. There's no stability. Again, looking at their squad, obviously the likes of Francisco Totti have now moved on, but they do have some very good players in that side. Diego Perotti is a great player. Lazaro Pellegrini is a great player. Justin Cliver, Patrick Cliver's son, if he's not a good player, there's something wrong. Sadly, your best player is not going to be available to you for the first couple of months of the season. Nico Salio is out for about three or four months with a bad, bad knee injury he picked up in pre-season. So you're going to be hamstrung from the start. But don't worry, you do have the talent in this squad to make Roma a force again. And that's our list. If you have any suggestions for who else we can take a look at, please let me know in the comments. Don't forget to leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. I've been FMZ, that was five teams to take a look at for your save for FM21, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.